Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. In this tutorial video, I'm going to continue making the, the five different buttons that I demoed in the previous video. And now we're going to get into the crazy stuff. So we're going to work with some new buttons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my button. So I'm going to double click on this to jump to it. And it looks like Xcode doesn't remember what these buttons should look like. All right, so let's go and run it. You can see that Xcode is uh, differing a little bit. Sometimes clicking off of Xcode or something has been able to fix this issue, but it looks like it doesn't remember that we sliced this image. So let's try adjusting that, saving our image asset catalog, going back to Xcode. All right, so it's not any different. I, I wouldn't worry too much about this. I've seen it work, and this is the first time it hasn't worked for me in a while. Uh, I would submit a bug report, and hopefully Apple can fix it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create another custom button. And we're going to create this so that it's tileable. So what I want to do is change this image. And I've got a pattern one that I want to use. And then we'll duplicate this so that we can see what this looks like when we stretch it. So if we stretch it, you're going to see, again, if we don't set up the, the way it should stretch, it's just going to stretch out. And so we're going to get a different look than we probably want to. So if you want to create a repeatable pattern, what you're going to need to do is jump over to your images asset catalog. And then you're going to go to pattern one, and we're going to start slicing. So click the button in the bottom right to start slicing if it's not already open. And now I'm going to slice in the, I think just the horizontal. But what we're going to do is we're going to drag the lines all the way to the edges of this image. So it's important that this image is going to tile in whatever directions you want it to go. And so if we run it now, you're going to see that we have this nice tiling image. And if we jump back to the storyboards, what do we see? All right, so these, this one is working. Let me zoom in here. I can't really tell if this one's working. This one's working, um, but for some reason, our top one is not working. I wonder if we change the, the image. So let's switch this to our pattern. And then we switch it back to our button rounded. Still no dice. All right, so a little bit glitchy there. Maybe quit next code would help. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now but that's always something that you can try because it was just working in the previous video. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is another funky button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alter Option, click on this to duplicate, and we're gonna go for a new pattern. So let's go pattern two. Now this one is already stretching, so we're seeing some artifacting. The The ellipses uh, aren't, or they're not circles anymore. We have ellipses, and now here we have really blurry ellipses. So if I were to run this on the device, what you're gonna see is that, well, at least these look sharp. So uh, that's one benefit of the simulator is that it's going to display the correct retina assets versus the storyboard, which kind of um, drops the ball right here. All right, so next, what I wanna do is show you how we can make it so that these pin to the edges. And this is gonna be a technique that you can leverage to create some ornamentation that is basically gonna stay on the outer edges of your image. So what you want to do is slice this one open, slice it in both directions. Actually, the default slice should help us out here. And if it doesn't, I'll show you how to adjust it. All right, so we'll go ahead, we'll run. And now you can see that we've got like these, these corners. So this could be some content that you could pin and you can basically make this look like you've got some post going through the button if you really wanted that effect, or you could have your artist do some other kind of interesting effect with that. So I'm just going to stretch this one out so that you can see that one works. This one should work. It, it looks like there's a little bit glitch. It wasn't designed to be resizable in the vertical direction. So I'm noticing a little artifact, but it's really subtle. Um, right around here, there's some extra fatness in the line. It's, it's pretty subtle on a retina screen. We might not notice that, or we might, unsure. So we could zoom in, see what it looks like don't really notice it. So you might be able to get away with that, though I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, so make sure that if you need to resize in the vertical direction, that your asset is gonna look good in that direction. So you can see here, this asset works pretty well, but I do see a little artifacting where it's sort of striping something. So what we're gonna wanna look at is either we need to have our artist redo the asset. So let's zoom in here. I'm holding control and I'm zooming in because unfortunately Xcode doesn't let me zoom uh, in the interface builder. So in order to make this easier to see, we need to jump in. So I'm going to change this. 
if we increase this region, this region is going to be tiled, and we won't want the, the effect we get. Uh, you're going to see some weird clipping over here. All right, so we really want this to be as minimal as possible, so I'm going to just pull this down. And actually, we can zoom. This one does have zoom, so I lied about that. You can just zoom in here. Uh, you can't zoom in on the norm, normal interface. And let's go ahead and rerun this, see if this fixes our issue. All right, so I'm, I'm zooming in. That's looking pretty good to me. All right, so we've got that button. There's one more button I want to create, and that is we're going to have to jump back to storyboard. Uh, here, this button, I'm going to show you how we can have content in the center that's going to be repeating. So instead of the pattern 2, we'll go pattern 3. This is going to have a single image on the very center. If I go ahead and run it, you'll see what that looks like. And it's actually really hard to see because the buy is on top. So let's just make this bigger. And right now, okay, so it's not set up to, to tile or to stretch. So we're getting one big sort of weird in the middle. And what we need to do, again, is set up the, the way that this is going to slice. So we're going to go to pattern three. We're going to start slicing. Here, again, I want the vertical and the horizontal. But now I'm going to show you a more advanced technique. What we want is we don't want just a single pixel to repeat. We don't want the entire thing to stretch either. And so we're going to drag these so that we can create a box around our center thing. Now, remember here, this means we're going to cut out anything. So if there's something you want to cut, you can cut it out. Otherwise, you can just make these two lines together and you can move them as one, uh, depending on the direction of, of motion. And so it looks like it's going to stop there automatically for some reason. And here, you're just going to have to adjust this until it looks okay. Now, I'm going to make it so it looks a little bit funky. So I'm going to make it so that we're going to have a, a lot more space on the horizontal direction, just so you can see how this is going to lay out this rep repetitive content. Now, the one thing I have noticed, this technique, I don't think has been tested by Apple fully. So you're really going to have to run this on the, the device. Looking at it in the storyboard is not going to necessarily match what we see here. So let's see what the differences are and see if they look the same. Uh, and it could be that it looks the same. It could be that it doesn't look the same. And it does look pretty similar, but I'm noticing that we see a little bit of a difference between these two. So it looks like in Xcode, in the Story Builder, if you're trying to do this type of effect, you can't rely on this. You actually have to run it on a real device. Now, one of the things that we could do to, to double check this is we could see if the preview looks any different. So I'm going to click on the Venn diagram icon for the Assistant Editor, and we'll switch to preview and see what this looks like. And we'll run it again, and we'll compare all of them. So I'm seeing differences here. So this is, again, a more advanced effect, um, but it might take a little bit of tweaking to get looking right. And if this isn't rendering correctly, which I think I need to submit another bug report on, uh, then Apple needs to fix that again. All right, we do want to go in multiples of whatever your, your image asset's going to be. So the height ideally should be 120, since that's a multiple of 40, which was the base height. And if we rerun this, then we see that our clipping is a little bit weird. Uh, I'm unsure why it's looking exactly like that, but this is a more advanced technique. And, and like I said, Apple hasn't really promoted this at all. It's just something I sort of discovered from playing around and wanting to achieve some weird effects where you could get some kind of like metallic, uh, holy surface behind your, your content. So Again, just create a box around this, and that will make it, it tile, and then see how it looks in the application. And that's how you can finish up these five different buttons. You can click on any one of them. They are default iOS buttons, so they'll have the nice animation, the nice fade out, uh, where it's going to basically desaturate the, the button when you press on them. All right, thanks for watching. If this was useful and you can apply this to your own app, I know the buttons look a little bit funky, but the point is, is really in that top button. You want to create a stretchable button because you don't know how long your button needs to be. And this solves that using Xcode without writing any code. You just need to customize the asset, slice and dice, and you're good to go. So if this was useful, like it. And if you're interested, I have a coupon for my game course where you can learn how to create buttons in your games 
that are custom and can earn you money through in-app purchases. So sign up. I've got a 50% discount. And otherwise, check out my next video where I'm going to take you back into the game where we're going to learn how to use auto layout to really customize our interface and get started with that.